Right now, we all know that this is the least affordable housing market pretty much in U.S. history. And it's to the point where so many people cannot afford to jump into buying a house that the majority of folks are looking at renting right now instead of buying, not by choice, because it's the only option. But a lot of people who are doing this are actually pretty lucky right now, considering just how much cheaper it is to rent pretty much everywhere throughout the country. The most recent data, according to Realtor.com, determined that it is cheaper to rent then buy in 47 of the 50 largest metropolitan areas throughout the country. That's a deal, guys. That's a good position to be in right now, especially if your budget is being crushed by inflation. Any way possible you can save money is a good thing. And then you might say, well, Michael, then the rent always goes up. And you know, even if it's cheaper now, it's not going to be cheaper. They're going to keep raising the rents. Well, actually, rents have been on the decline for the past eight months in a row. And it's likely to continue in that direction due to the sheer amount of rental vacancies we have and the amount of new construction being built in the form of rentals. In fact, we've never seen multifamily construction this high ever in the history of our country. So. There's a lot of new rental inventory coming to the market that's going to influence how much people are gonna pay for rent. And it's already starting to show right now. Take Austin, Texas for an example here. The monthly cost of buying a starter home is about $3,946 a month. That'd be your mortgage payment, your taxes, insurance, all that stuff. That's more than twice the monthly cost of renting at $1,670, guys. The monthly savings on that is $2,276 a month. For anyone who's counting, that's over $27,000 a year before you ever earned any interest on it. Throwing in a high yield savings account or treasuries earning over 5%, that'll net you even more. You're a savvy investor in the stock market, you can earn seven to 10% on it, that'll earn you even more. So those savings are tremendous. And so according to realtor.com's data, they found only three metros right now that are actually cheaper to buy than to rent. And that'd be Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, Memphis, Tennessee, and Birmingham, Alabama. I actually went to Birmingham on my last road trip. I made a video there for you guys and I can confirm that is true. They still have a lot of affordable houses in the area. Although you have to be careful because the area can be dodgy depending on where you go. But that's how it is everywhere, right? And it's now becoming the same story here in Miami, which is so crazy because it was like this for a long time. For the longest time before the pandemic, it was always more expensive to buy something in Miami than to rent. And then when prices started to shoot through the roof for rent, that dynamic actually got flipped on its head, which was one of the things that inspired me to buy, actually. But now that trend is already starting to reverse. Uh, for example, my friend Ben, he's a fan of my channel also, he watches all these videos. He was able to rent an apartment for $4,000 a month that would cost over $8,000 a month to own. Think about that, guys. You're literally saving half and you're talking $4,000 a month in savings, that's $48,000 a year stuffed back into your pocket. Who wouldn't be going for that right now? They talked to Ryder from NerdWallet who studies the housing market all the time and she lives up in Durham, North Carolina. In Durham, North Carolina, home prices are averaging about $550,000 and a home at that price would cost $2,868 a month in monthly principal and interest, assuming a 20% down payment. Now, now keep in mind, that's not even including property taxes and insurance, guys. We're talking just principal and interest. So it is actually far higher than that. But rents in central Durham, North Carolina average around $1,700 a month. So clearly renting is the cheaper option. Now it is true that rent prices have risen about 29% nationwide average since the pandemic started. But it's also true that home prices have risen even more by about 42%. So no matter which way you slice it, guys, it is still cheaper to rent. And you know, you always hear this advice like, oh, you shouldn't try to time the market, stop waiting for lower interest rates, just jump in and buy today. That's what you're gonna hear from all the lenders and all of the real estate people. That's the advice they're gonna give you because obviously they wanna get paid today, not tomorrow or maybe never, right? But the reality is, you can wait out this market and save a ton of money. We just showed you that right now. And those are just a couple of small examples from 
pretty expensive areas in the country right now. And the other thing is, guys, if you live in an area where it is cheaper to buy than rent, then there's no reason to mull it over. If you can afford to buy and you've been wanting to become a homeowner, then knock yourself out. Forget about everything I'm saying here on the channel and what people talk about and just do what you feel like doing. Just understand what you're getting yourself into in terms of, you know, it's a lie that your payment can never go up because your property taxes and insurance can most definitely go up. I made a video about that recently, highlighting people's scenarios where this is happening to them in real life and it can sting financially. So don't fall for this trap that, oh, just because you're going to become a homeowner, you're going to have financial stability with your payment. That is not true. And I know a lot of people have been waiting for the housing market to come down and crash. There are pockets of the country where that's happening right now. Like just look at Palm Springs, California, guys, where people are selling houses for 40% less than they did three years ago because of the Airbnb ban. You know, look at San Francisco, a lot of areas in there, prices down over 20%. Austin, Texas, same thing, 18% decline from the peak. So there's a lot of places where prices have been coming down, but I realize not everybody lives there, not everybody can afford to live in these places, and even though the prices came down, it's still expensive. But really, the only way things are gonna change substantially is we need to see more inventory everywhere. That's gonna be the main thing that's gonna change this. You guys know I film a ton of videos and I'm a really busy guy and I decided to partner with Factor so that way I can have a nice fresh meal every time I come home from shooting my videos. All I have to do is pop a quick meal into the microwave for two minutes or if I'm not feeling lazy, I can put it in the oven for a little bit longer and not use the microwave. The the food really tastes great and I love that it shows you how many calories are in each meal. It's especially helpful if you're trying to lose weight. You know, it's really hard counting calories and Factor does make it easy to do that, which I love as well. Factor is also a fantastic alternative for people who don't know how to cook or just don't want to cook and want to have the convenience of just having a nice tasty meal ready when they want it. And we're always talking about saving money on this channel and this is a healthier and cheaper alternative than going through the drive through or ordering takeout and it just really fits with the busy lifestyle. Head to factor75.com or click the link below and use code BORDENARO50 to get 50% off your first factor box and free wellness shots for life. Two free wellness shots from three available flavors for every order while you are an active subscriber. But I do have hope that we are going to see this surge of inventory at some point in the future and I'm going to get into some of the reasons here why right now. So the first thing to, we have to look at here is since mortgage rates have been going back up, the applications for people to buy homes has been going back down again, right? The higher mortgage rates go, it's not a surprise that people back away from buying houses. But here's a, a red flag for the housing market in general when it comes to this, okay? Refinance applications fell 2% for the week, but they still rose 12% year over year for that same week a year ago, guys. And I've talked about this a little bit here before, but you have to ask yourself, why are people refinancing when the mortgage rates are going up? This is a big red flag, a big warning sign for what's happening in the housing market right now. People are always wondering, well, where is the inventory going to come from? Because everybody has these low rates. Nobody wants to sell. Well, as of right now, and we have this in writing, in data that we keep seeing pretty much month after month here, that refinance applications continue to be higher than they were a year ago, even though rates are higher than they were a year ago. Now, why on earth would anyone want to give up that high interest rate well most people say they wouldn't you know they're not going to sell their house and move when they have a low interest rate and trade it in for a high interest rate well that's only half true because you're right that people are not moving they're not giving up that low interest rate to buy a house at a higher interest rate but what they are doing is they're refinancing their current home in order to do cash out refinances and pull money out of that house and this seems to be the temporary game plan to let's keep the party rolling for as long as possible and let's keep living in this house for as long as we can. But what you have to recognize is what those people are essentially doing is they're giving up their low mortgage rate for a higher one and they're increasing their monthly payment pretty substantially by doing so and they're staying in their current house and they're maybe doing one of two things. Either they know they're going bankrupt and they're trying to suck as much money out of the house as possible and just 
keep paying their bills for as long as they can until they default and then let it go in the foreclosure and just strategically grind things into the ground for as long as they can. Either people are thinking of doing that or they're still bullish on the housing market and they think by pulling out money now, doing a cash out refinance, that the value of their home is going to continue to go up and they're going to do it again in a couple more years from now and pull even more money out. That has to be the mindset of what these people are doing. But here's the problem. As the economy continues to get weaker, as unemployment goes up and people do not have good, strong, high paying jobs, those people are going to start defaulting on their mortgages. So you're going to see inventory come from that. And also, just with these purchase applications in general, you know, they're 12% lower than they were a year ago. So you literally have purchase applications 12% lower than a year ago and refinance applications 12% higher than a year ago. Meanwhile, you have less and less people buying houses, even though homes still come on the market, which means little by little, homes will start to build up if we continue down this road, which it seems like we are for now. You also at the same time have an 8% drop in pending home sales over the past four weeks. So you just have less and less people buying these houses. And it's funny because they talked to some real estate agents here about this and they said, well, it's been a pretty harsh winter in a lot of different areas in the country. So, uh, you know, it's keeping a lot of house hunters at home, trying to find pretty much any excuse they can for why the housing market isn't doing good without acknowledging high rates and high home prices. And we're likely to see these mortgage rates continue to stay high for longer, guys, because these mortgage rates are following the most recent uh, inflation report, which is going in the wrong direction. And there's a very high possibility that as soon as the Fed takes their foot off the gas with keeping the rates higher for longer, that inflation can skyrocket. And if that happens, guess what's going to happen to mortgage rates? Same thing. We are officially in this situation in our economy and in this housing market that cannot be fixed, guys. The more they lower rates, the higher inflation will go, which is going to force them to raise rates once again. So that's a vicious cycle. So lowering rates isn't going to fix this. The more money they pump into the economy and try to give people money to buy houses and all this, all these incentive programs that they do, all that's going to do is raise inflation even higher, which is going to cause the Fed to keep interest rates higher for even longer. So that's not a fix to the issue. So what is the fix? As far as I know, there isn't one. The only fix is going to be to let it all come crashing down because that's what's been needing to happen for years now. Now, here's another reason that inventory is unusually low on the housing market right now. Redfin recently compiled some data about how long the typical homeowner uh, spends in their home and it has been on the rise pretty substantially since the last housing crash guys for example back in 2006 the average homeowner only stayed in their house about six and a half years and then at its peak in 2020 that number basically doubled to 13.4 years now since 2020 it has since been coming down to about 11.9 years but this is why we're also seeing so few homes for sale on the market because the demographic trends of how people have been using their homes has fundamentally changed quite a bit in the last decade as well. People are staying in their houses literally twice as long as they did just 15 years ago. And a lot of these people are baby boomers, guys. In fact, it says here that 40% of baby boomers have lived in their home for at least 20 years and another 16% have lived in their home for 10 to 19 years. And this is definitely a generational thing because when they look at millennials, for example, less than 7% of millennials actually stay in their home for 10 years or longer. And it's mainly due to job changes and needing to move. You know, you're younger, starting families and different opportunities arise. And so people in the younger generation just naturally have to move more. Whereas baby boomers, many of them are retired or when they were working, they came up in an era where you could work the same job for 25 or 30 years and retire and get a pension and never have to move, you know? So it was just a different time and it makes sense of why baby boomers stayed in their homes for so much longer than younger generations. But like I've said numerous times here on the channel, guys, that trend is going to reverse in the future. Since the baby boomers are the largest generation in history, they own the most homes as well. Guess who's gonna be selling the most homes? As 
more of them pass away or need to downsize or need to get rid of the home for whatever reason because they can't afford to keep it anymore who knows and so that is going to be an eventual massive source of inventory on the u.s housing market the thing is nobody can say for sure when right but we can say for sure that most likely in the next 10 to 15 years and i know that's not the answer that a lot of people want to buy a house today want to hear but it is the reality that we're going to have to wait quite some time for all this inventory to come to market but it's a guarantee that it will and i'd be even willing to bet that many of the baby boomers that are hanging on to these houses today would maybe want to sell and maybe move to a different house but a lot of them probably can't afford to do that because they probably can't even afford to rebuy their house with today's prices and interest rates, let alone go buy a new, more expensive house at today's rates. Even if people want to move, they're kind of financially strapped and aren't able to. But this is all one more point in favor of renting right now, because if the cost of rent is going down and the cost to own a home is still going up, especially when you factor in taxes and insurance, it's kind of a no brainer to wait this out, right? Now, maybe you don't wanna wait for 10 to 15 years, and I'm not telling anybody that's what you should do, but just know that if you are able to save a lot of money right now by renting, this can massively benefit you in the future when it's time to actually be able to buy a house, guys. When the inventory becomes plentiful and you save for the next 10 years because you're saving so much money on renting versus owning right now, think of what kind of opportunity that's gonna allow you in the future. But like I said earlier, this is not really a choice for most people. A lot of people are being forced to rent, not because they want to, but because they have to. And people in the younger generation are still living with their parents and trying to continue saving. People in the younger generation are also resorting to living with roommates, living in micro apartments, buying tiny homes instead of a traditional house, things like that, that people are doing. The other day I covered somebody who is living in a warehouse and is saving a ton of money by doing that. There are things that you can do and still save money on housing right now. And there's also a lot of evidence that the younger generation just doesn't want to be tied down to a house payment either. They want to have the flexibility to move around and take a job halfway across the country if the opportunity comes up or whatever happens in their life, they want to be able to seize that opportunity and enjoy it rather than be attached to a house. So my advice to any young person that does want to get on the property ladder but feels like it's impossible right now is to first of all not give up, guys, because one thing we know about real estate is it doesn't stay static, okay? The home prices fluctuate, it goes up, and it comes down. Now, I can't promise you any certain percentage of, of decrease in home prices in your area, and I can't give you a timeline on when that might be possible, but just knowing that it will happen at some point should give you hope and reason to continue saving. That's number one. And also, hopefully by hearing everything I just told you, gives you some hope that it's gonna happen sooner or later because when you have so many baby boomers that are getting old and passing away and not able to continue uh, keeping up with the house anymore, that's a massive source of future inventory. When you have people uh, refinancing their homes and taking on a higher interest rate and trading in their low one, those people are clearly broke and not doing well financially, and those people are gonna lose their homes and you could be the lucky buyer. So if you don't give up and YOLO all your savings into some crazy investment, you can still achieve that dream of home ownership at some point. But it's unfortunate that in the meantime, your living situation is gonna have to be less than ideal. Unless you want to jump into an unconventional home buying situation, like buying a house with uh, multiple people. I see people doing that. You can also house hack and buy the house yourself and rent out all the bedrooms. I'm not saying anybody should do this, but that's what people who really want to get in the housing game and otherwise couldn't afford to are actually doing right now. But you really have to stop and ask yourself, is it worth doing all of that and going through all these hoops, guys? Because when you see these big contrasts between how expensive it is to own versus rent, I don't see why most people want to get in on owning their own house right now. Like, I understand there are some benefits, like, you know, you can poke as many holes in the wall as you want, you can do renovations and change things throughout the house without permission from a landlord, and just have your own space that you know you don't have to worry about moving out of unless you want to move out. Those are the things I like about being a homeowner as well. And if that's the most important thing to you, more than how much money you're saving, then go for it. 
but I just don't think it's smart. Like I personally would not be a homeowner right now if it was substantially cheaper to rent. And it still isn't, guys. If I wanted to rent a comparable place to where I live right now, I'd have to pay about $1,500 to $2,000 more per month. So even though rents here in Miami are far cheaper than owning, because I got such a good deal on my place when I bought it, the payment still remains lower than what it would cost to rent something similar. So if you can find yourself in that situation today in 2024, I say jump on it. But I really don't think most people are gonna be able to find a deal like that today in 2024, which is why you're seeing the market slow down so much. This is why people aren't buying homes. That With these high interest rates, it just doesn't make sense, guys. And really, that's the other thing. The interest rates are not high, the prices are high. These interest rates we have for buying a home right now are actually perfectly normal according to history. It's just that the prices when combined with these rates are just astronomical and unaffordable. And so nobody wants to look at that. You know, all the economists, all the housing experts want to dance around this and say, well, when rates come down, things are gonna be more affordable, whatever, and then it's gonna drive the prices back up. Even if that happens, eventually it will get so expensive that even with a 0% interest rate, nobody will be able to afford a home. So have patience, guys. Keep looking. Never stop your home search. You never know when you're going to come across the right deal that can come at the least expected time from the least expected source. So always be on the lookout if it's something you want to do. And in the meantime, just keep saving that money. If you guys enjoyed this video, make sure you subscribe to the channel. And if you don't want to wait for my next video to come out, check out this one on the screen right over here and I'll see you in the next one.